Hi, I'm Julie from NGSS Nerd, and today I'm going to show you the teacher setup for the first lesson in my fifth grade space bundle. This lesson is going to get students ready for the performance expectation of fifth grade Earth and Space Science 1 1, which is supporting an argument that the apparent brightness of the sun and stars is due to their relative distances from the Earth. Now, before students jump into learning right away about the sun and stars, I wanted to introduce the concepts of scale and creating models for space um, with some space objects that they might be a little more familiar with. So they're going to learn the cross-cutting concept of scale and the science and engineering practice of modeling by looking at scale models of the Earth, Moon, and Sun first. So students are going to draw a model uh, that is the correct sizes and the comparisons of those three things and see that the sun is way bigger than the moon, um, but that they both look like they're about the same size from Earth. And so students are going to start to come up with ideas on their own about why they might look the same size, even when the sun is many, many times larger than the moon. Next, we're going to do a model that not only incorporates the size of those objects, but also the distance that the objects would be away from each other if they were that size. So for this, you're gonna need a bigger space, um, something like a hallway or a gym or a field. Um, and if you don't have one of those spaces available, I'm gonna record um, a, an example that you could play for your students instead of going to one of those spaces. And so when they do this, they're going to see that the Earth and Moon in this model are only five or six centimeters apart, but that the Sun is about 21 meters away. Uh, so they'll start to get that idea that the Sun is much larger, but it's much farther away. The Moon is much smaller, but it is much closer to Earth. And so that's why they appear different sizes. On page three, students are going to draw a scale model of the moon, earth, and sun that shows their sizes compared to each other. Um, we're going to be drawing this about six billion times smaller than they actually are. So in order to do this, um, a couple materials are helpful. The first is some sort of writing utensil with a very fine point to write with. Um, so something like these uh, pens or a mechanical pencil are helpful. Students can also just use a very sharp pencil. Um, students will also need a ruler. So when you're giving these directions it's helpful to give some hints to the kids as they're drawing um, because it is really hard to draw some of these smaller ones and to draw a circle that's this size exactly in diameter. So first is drawing a scale model of the earth. And this is about two millimeters. So making sure that you go over with students what a millimeter is and that it's the very smallest marks on a ruler. Starting at zero and drawing a line over. It's very small. And after they draw the line, they can make a, the circle on the top and on the bottom. And that's about the size of the Earth scaled model. For the moon, it's half a millimeter. So showing students that when you put this in, you actually want the thing to be smaller, uh, the moon to be smaller than even that first line. So you're going to just put your pencil down and make a dot. This dot is smaller. It's not quite half, it's a little bit bigger, but that's okay. And you can see it's barely gonna be visible. And lastly is creating a scaled model of the sun. Now in, for the sun, it's 19.8 centimeters. I wanted to help out a little bit um, because I know this can be difficult and it's gonna take up most of this paper. So I put a couple of dots on here that will help guide students. So there's one dot for the top of the circle and one dot for the left-hand side of the circle. And what you can do with these is line up the zero with that dot, get your ruler pretty straight up and down, and then come all the way down to 19 Point 0.8 and put another dot. So now they have a circle that has the height of 19.8. And then again, with the width, line up your zero with the guide dot, get it about horizontal, and again, mark 
another dot at 19.8. At this time, you now have four dots going around the paper, and you can tell students to draw a circle that connects these. Now, it's going to be important to emphasize that it's okay if it's not a perfect circle. It doesn't have to look perfect um, because it's going to be a little bit difficult to draw between these dots. And now you can see the very, the small earth here, the even smaller moon and a much, much larger sun. So now we're going to create a model that doesn't only look at just the scaled size of the earth, moon and sun, but also takes into account the distance that they would be if they were those scaled sizes that the students just drew. So there's a, um, couple sheets for the teacher guide um, that you can cut out to help you with this model. You cut out the sun and then cut each of these out along these dotted lines to be different labels and pieces of the model. So first um, is this tiny little piece that doesn't look like it has anything on it, uh, but this is that two millimeter earth. Uh, right here, if we can see, is the half a millimeter moon and this is the distance they would be away from each other if they were these sizes. So wherever you are um, for your model you would put this down on the ground so that students could see the distances between and then you can put the labels by those. So I'm going to be going outside um, and so I put mine on two little skewers that I had in my kitchen. Uh, so I'm going to actually stick these down into the ground but you could also have a student just hold these next to it and be in charge of it, or you could lay it flat down on the ground next to it as well. So there's one for the earth, and then one that you would put next to the moon. And then you'll need to take the sun to the distance it would be away from these, and it's pretty far. Uh, so in this model, it is 70 feet or about 21 meters. Um, and so I don't have one of those really large rolling measuring tapes uh, that would be really great for this activity uh, so that you could just stretch it and keep going until you get to it. Uh, but I took some yarn, a lot of yarns basically, <laughs> like a little ball of yarn by itself, and I pre-measured out 21 meters. So I would have um, maybe one student hold the end right next to where the earth is on this. So we would hold it here and another student take it all the way to where it ends. Um, this does fit on like a basketball court. Most basketball courts I think were 90 or 94 um, feet long. So a gym would be a good place if you need something right inside uh, or a hallway. Um, I'll be going to a baseball field and that'll be the last part of this video. So after going outside to try this, I would definitely suggest that you kind of loosely lay the string down um, on the ground first if you're using string uh, instead of trying to hold it all in your hand because I made a huge mess and knotted the entire thing up. Uh, the way that's in the picture up here worked much better. If you would like the student worksheets, teacher guide, and answer key that go along with this video, you can find them in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. There's a link in the description below. You just drew a scale model of the sizes of the Earth, Moon, and Sun. It should look something like this. The Earth is actually really huge, but on your paper, in your model, it looks very small. That's because we drew it 6 billion times smaller than its actual size. The Sun is also drawn 6 billion times smaller than its actual size on your paper, but it's much larger than the Earth. You can probably barely see the scale model you drew of the moon. Let's circle it. There it is. 
the moon drawn six billion times smaller than it really is as well is barely a dot on your paper. This model is only showing the size of these objects. Now let's include how far away these objects would be from each other if they were the sizes that we drew. When we include distance in our model, it will no longer fit on our paper, so we need to go outside. The first thing I did to create my new model was to put a piece of paper on the ground that represents the Earth and Moon sizes and how far away they would be from each other. So if the Earth and Moon were the sizes that we drew earlier, they would be only about 5.5 centimeters away from each other. How far do you think the Sun would be from the Earth in this model? Let's see if your predictions are correct. This picture shows the Earth and Moon at the left side of the picture. They are so close together that it's difficult to show their separation in this picture. On the right side is how far away the Sun would be in our model. The distance is about 21 meters, or 70 feet, away from the Earth. How close was your prediction? Let's finish up this model by looking at the Sun from the perspective of Earth. When we're standing at the Earth marker, how big does the sun look compared to how large you know it was when you drew it in your model? Why does it look this way? Now go back to your packet and answer the analysis questions to start drawing your own conclusions about this model.